So my home flight simulator setup is kind of ridiculous, but even more ridiculous is the fact that I've still been turning my head left and right using this mouse. Now, honestly, it's a bit of a waste of time and not very realistic, which is where this Toby iTracker 5 comes in. Now, Toby sent me this as part of their anniversary of some kind and said, hey, the flight docs, we want you to use this, tell your audience about it and see what use case you can make of it. Now, I've been using this thing for a few weeks now. And let me tell you, why haven't I used it before? Now, on today's episode, we are in the brand new Airbus A321 from Phoenix. And we are flying a British Airways Airbus A321. And what we're gonna be doing is circuit training because this plane is not that easy to fly and land. It's a bit longer and tail striking is very easy. I mean, just look at this guy landing at Madeira. <laughs> yes, it's terrible, isn't it? Without further ado, let's get to it. Let's set up the aircraft. Let's do some circuits and let's talk about the Toby eye tracker. Hello guys and welcome to the flight deck on this stunning morning in Edinburgh. Now what we're doing today we are flying the Airbus A321, the new one by Phoenix, and we are learning how to fly it because actually compared to the A320, there are a few more quirks with this bad boy in that it actually is a little bit harder to fly. It's longer. It has a smaller wing relative to the A320, meaning it can be tricky for landing and things. So we've got about 10 tons of fuel. We actually got 10 tons of fuel. Well, the APU is burning through a little bit of it and we've got 11 passengers on board, just some guys to get some great angles and views for us, for you guys at home. The plan is we're going to take off runway 24 and we are going to do a standard left hand pattern and we are essentially going to do one touch and go and hopefully one full stop landing and i'm hoping that these landings and approaches are smooth i've spent some time going to aviation school of youtube yes yes youtube and i've studied how airliners actually do these circuits i'm hoping i can try and make this as realistic as possible now before every good flight is a good walk around. So without further ado, let's look around this beautiful aircraft and let's just make sure it's airworthy to go because the Phoenix A321 is new and it's a new plane. It's actually my favorite of the Airbus A320 family. And let's have a look around the details of the outside. This thing looks spectacular. Let's go. Okay, gonna shimmy to the side and then we're gonna turn around and we need to open that door. There we go. Oh, and then, <laughs> okay, he's like, Guys, you need to hurry up. <laughs> we need to get going. Okay, there's the cabin. And wow, that is stunning. British Airways cabin. I've not flown British Airways for a long time. I've heard they fell off, but actually, to be honest, this actually looks kind of okay. Anyway, what's going on, mate? <laughs> and then let's do 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 And then let's have a look at that. Wow, wow. It is it's a long boy, isn't it? It is. I feel like I'm gonna get a tail strike today, definitely. Okay, let's just do an actual walk around. Let's start from the front. Nose wheel landing gear, that looks pretty good. Look at the details of the dirt on this thing. It's actually amazing. And the light reflections. Is that the actual reflection of the what I'm looking at? Let's move around it. Oh, it is. And the chocks and everything, it looks so good. And then if you look at our left, we've got the pitot tubes there. And then we've got our old mate here. Let's just say good morning to everyone. Good morning, mate. Okay, good morning. Nope, okay. Anyway, let's go and look at the engines. We've got the IAE V2500s here, or the 2500. And I think these are my favorite over the CFMs personally. They've got that real buzzsaw sound about them. And look at the details. Oh man, I want to do this for real guys. Comment down below, should I get an ATPL and just become a pilot? Just let me know, because I'm really, really tempted. Now, one of the quirky things about using the Toby eye tracker is that you can sit as if you're a passenger and then just look out the window. Hmm. Anyway, let's get back to the flight deck. Okay, we're back on the flight deck. It is time to get ready for our departure. Right, so we are gonna be doing circuits at about 1,800. Uh, so let's set 1,800 here. 1,800, that is set. Um, I believe we do have our takeoff details sorted. V1 of 130, rotating at 135, and V2 of 137. It's going to be a flaps 2 departure, and we're going to set the trimmable horizontal stabilizer to 2.2 up. So on our overhead, APU is on. We're going to switch off external power. Uh, let's get the APU bleed on. 
ready for departure. Right, let's do a quick announcement for the uh, the sightseeing passengers who are joining us on uh, this training flight for some reason, because clearly they don't know me, because I'm not flying. Tail strike galore. Good morning, passengers and crew. This is your first officer speaking. I know I'm sat in the caption seat, but that's okay. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a couple of circuits. One is going to be a touch and go, where we smash into terra firma, and then we take off again to subject you to more torture. Secondly, we're going to be doing a full stop landing. Uh, if there are any questions, please leave them to the end. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened the whole time. It's not coming off. And if you don't have your seatbelt fastened, then what happens to you is your own problem. What did he say? Let's get the seatbelt sign on, this sign on. Let's get the emergency exit light on as well. I think we can call for pushback. Let's get the beacon on. Okay, time to push back. Let's uh, get the head and eye tracker on and then let's release the parking brakes. Okay, let's get down to the pedestal. Let's get number two on and we've got N2 rising. As we're pushing back and getting both engines started, this is a great time to tell you that you can get your own Toby eye tracker 5 for 20% off at the moment and they're running a sweepstake in which you might be able to win one. All the details are down in the description below. We're gonna go APU bleed off, APU master off. Let's get taxi lights to on and let's select uh, flaps two. Flight control check. We're gonna go full right rudder and center and full left rudder and center. And then we're gonna go full left on the side stick just like so and center and full right on the side stick and center. We're gonna pull the elevators all the way back and back to center and then all the way forwards and back to center and we're going to go down here to our pitch trim and we're going to set 2.2 up just like so keep spinning that yep 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 i guess we're quite front heavy but <laughs> i'm calling myself fat anyway time to taxi let's go down here parking brake off and this should have enough power just to start moving under its own thrust which it does let's get the head tracker back on there we go and look this is again one of the perks of using it so when you're taxiing around if you're playing on VATSIM it can be very busy with the aircraft kind of flying around everywhere the ability to look left and look right as you turn onto the taxiway is actually really awesome now when you get the Toby eye tracker you have to actually learn how to adjust it so sensitivities wise it can be a bit tricky when you initially start and a little bit frustrating actually um, because there isn't really a guideline and all you can really use is how other people use it. Now we're going on the straight, I usually just turn it off because I don't need to look left and right. And also if I start looking at you guys, it's going to start turning the camera. You have to actually learn how to use it. It can be a little bit tricky, but don't give up. Work out the sensitivities that work for you and then you might find that this is actually a super useful tool. Now we are getting on the way to the runway. Let's go down to our panel here and let's set a couple of things. So we're gonna go max auto brake. <laughs> the amazing thing about this throttle tech flight box that I've got here now is that you could actually arm it. So here we go. <laughs> Arming it with the, anyway. Okay, cool. So we are getting towards the runway. We are gonna get the strobe lights on and the landing lights and takeoff lights to full takeoff. And we're gonna press the ding dong bell again just because we can anyway <laughs> and just like that i safely traveled to the end of runway 24 where we await our takeoff to start doing some circuits hopefully it goes well it is time to take off so let's set power up here to stabilize and we're gonna go 50 percent down on the stick and take off manflex srs runway auto thrust blue and we are on our way. Okay. V1. Rotate. Oh, whoa, that's a bit of a hard pull. Okay, positive weight of climb and gear is coming up. Perfect. Alright, let's bring the nose up just a touch more. And we are climbing, wow. Yeah, A321 does climb well, but look at the views. If you've never been to Edinburgh, you should put it on your list. We're gonna climb thrust as we pass 1,100. And then alt star, speed. And we're gonna just lower the nose. And we're gonna level out at 
10,800. I'm going to quickly set the speed to be 180. And we're going to turn off our flight directors. Oh, we're climbing too much. Let's go back down. And we're going to get the, uh, the bird on, but make sure the flight directors are off. We are flying at 180 or so, and we're going to think about doing a turn. We're going to just turn all the way back down to our downwind, and we're going to fly with the flight direct, the, um, the bird on, which tells you where your plane is actually going. And then we are going to just turn around. So we're going to just do a nice left-hand turn, like so, oh, about 25 degrees, maintaining that altitude. Let's have a look down on our, our MCDU. We're going to activate approach phase. There we go. Activate approach phase, and then what we're going to do... Ahead. <laughs> Yes, terrain. We're not going to go into the terrain. We're going to basically pull back and go back into managed terrain speed mode. Ahead. So if you look at our ND, that green dot tells us where the plane is actually going. The yellow dot, well, the yellow stick bit, is essentially where the plane is directing itself. We've got a slight crosswind here, which means we're just going to just get ourselves maybe to the right a little bit. Beautiful. Now, the joy of using an eye tracker or a head tracker is you can actually turn head. Look out the window. A lot of people have some difficulty with this because, as I said, it does require a bit of fine tuning. You have to spend some time working out what works for you. As I said, I think this is an invaluable tool when it comes to doing more tricky approaches, circled lands, places like Madeira, uh, Santos Dumont in Brazil, uh, Kaitak, for example. Uh, this makes it feel a lot easier. And uh, when it comes to actually using a setup and not using the keyboard, like if you don't have a full like fidelity cockpit, this does allow you to actually look around. Because as I said, I used to scroll with the mouse, which you know is far less effective. And then you can't do circuits like this super easily as well. But there we go, there's the field. What we're gonna do now is start thinking about our descent. So when we get a beam the threshold, I'm gonna start the chrono. And essentially what we're gonna be looking for is we're working out three seconds per 100 feet. So that'll be three times 18 which is, ah, well, you know what, let's just go down to 1500. Easier number to calculate off head, I know, I should know math there. So we are being the threshold and we're gonna start our timer there. Cool, because we have got a 12 knot tailwind, we're gonna be counting a little less. So we'd normally go to 45 seconds, we're gonna go to about 32 seconds, at which point we're gonna start configuring for our approach. Let's get ourselves a bit back on track. Here. Oh, there we go. So we're not going to get auto brake for this because it's going to be a touch and go. We're going to touch down. We're going to get flaps up to two. And then when we get flaps two, we're going to go full toga and then we're going to lift off. And hopefully it's going to be a nice seamless approach and landing. And 32 seconds, let's basically get flaps three, gear down, and we're going to basically start our turn over to the left hand side. So ordinarily in a real plane, you have someone else doing this for you. So <laughs> if it feels like if there are any real pilots watching this and you are tut tutting, well, look, can't be helped. Now we hit 160, we're gonna gently start our descent about 500 feet a minute. Let's bring the nose up just a touch, or 400 feet a minute, there we go, until we get a uh, visual with the pappies to confirm that we are on the right glide path. Just bringing it down just a touch, a very slow, gentle descent, and let's have a look over this side. Can we see the airfield yet? No, not quite yet, but let's have a look. Oh, and we are on the glide slope. Guys, this couldn't have gone any better. All right, let's go flaps full. I think we are ready to, to land. So now we're going, uh, we're going to go to 130, which will probably be about seven, 800 feet per minute to get on the glide slope or stay on the glide slope. Hopefully we can make a good landing. I mean, if you see my earlier videos, some of the landings are, uh, you know, a little bit hard. This ain't Ryan, this is BA, so we got to have a higher a service, should we say. But we are on the glide slope, beautiful. But ATC have cleared us to land, are we gonna do that? Let's just bring it in a bit. We are off center line now, but let's just do a slight turn here. Oh, beautiful. And this wing wing Ursa Minor joystick just feels so good to use. Okay, this is actually perfect. All right, not that I'm surprised, obviously, this is what I was expecting. All right, we're going to float a little bit. Let's just bring that down. And then what we want to do is when we land, we want to get rid of ground idle. So we want to advance the throttles from idle pretty quickly so that we don't uh, slow down too much. And also it will stow the throttle as well. So there we go. Bring it down a bit. There we go. Aiming for our aiming point. Don't go above nine degrees. Tail strike. And a bit of nose up. And settle nicely. Beautiful. Okay. Idle up, we're gonna go flaps two. 
Ah, uh, what's going on here? Flaps two. Do we bounce? <laughs> and we're gonna go. Ah, this is just messed up. Okay, and rotate. There we go. That was interesting. I think the actual touch and go portion was the hard part. But anyway, so let's concentrate again. Gear up. And we're going to set our mana speed to 80, 182. And let's bring the nose up a bit more. So this time I think we'll give ourselves a bit more space. Let's go up to 2000 uh, as we go upwards. You know what? I think that was actually a decent landing. Why don't you guys rate my landing in the comments down below? Right then, let's set ourselves up for the next arrival. So this is going to be a full stop landing. We're going to go auto break uh, low because it's um, we're relatively light. And we could do some like manual braking afterwards. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying this video, look, I've got some full VATS in flights planned after this one. As I said, I like to try aircraft out. This is the best way to learn how to fly and land an aircraft is just do a couple of quick circuits. I learned this from watching some YouTube videos and um, it does add to the realism when you get to do stuff in the same way that airline pilots would do it. Airport is coming in sight on our left there as we can see and it's a stunning day oh, in Edinburgh. Beautiful. Right then, we're going to be thinking about our approach. This time, uh, we're not going to be taking off again. We're going to be landing. Um, so hopefully we get a, uh, a nice landing. What we're not looking to do is butter it. Because we want to do a safe landing. And as they say, a good landing is one you can walk away from. I mean, does that count if you hobble away from it as well? Not really sure. Anyway, oh, we are very high. Okay, we are high. Okay, let's just bring the nose down a bit. We're almost on the pappies there. Let's uh, get rid of the auto throttle. We're going to bring it down and match it, and then we're going to press our two red buttons. Auto throttle is off. Now this is all me, which is probably a bad idea. And then we are now on the pappy, so let's just bring the descent, arrest the descent a little bit to about six, seven hundred feet per minute. And we are on final approach. Okay, everyone, we are on final approach now. Hopefully, this landing is just as good as the first one, but I cannot promise anything because the auto throttle is now not playing a part in this. Okay, we're coming into Edinburgh nicely. Bit low, correcting. 100. Set and hold. Beautiful. And you're going to say elect four reverses there. And that was a pretty nice landing. Oh, I'm not going to lie. That was pretty sweet. All right. Decel. Reverses. Green. And then let's just do manual braking to make this exit here. And reverse idle. And this actually has an idle detent. And okay. And we've made it. And then the beautiful thing about the eye tracker is that I can heavy brake and then slowly bring the aircraft off the runway. And we're going to taxi back to our gate and let's do a little bit of a debrief. I genuinely love using this. I think this is invaluable for using in an aircraft like this. Now, I don't really use the eye tracking portion because I don't think it's that helpful in an airliner. But if you're playing a fighter jet or flying general aviation, I think then it's kind of super helpful. But yeah, I've enjoyed my time testing this thing and I'm looking forward to taking it onto the Vatsim network and doing some interesting flights for you guys very soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment down below, tell me what you want to see. Till next time, see you later.